Sarah Muxlow is an end-of-life doula, registered social worker and educator. She is co-founder of the End-of-Life Doula Association of Canada and holds a degree in social work from the University of the Fraser Valley. She is trained in vigil, hospice and bereavement care. Sarah has dedicated herself to expanding education and services surrounding hospice, palliative care and grief and loss. The website for her business, Live Purposefully, describes her as empowering clients through proactive care planning, which assists people in living purposefully with peace of mind, confidence, and connection. Sarah, please. Mom, I think you should really come to the home. I think this might be the morning that Nanny dies. On February 26, 2016, I had been vigil with my Nanny all through the night, watching and listening to her every breath, seeing her decline right before my eyes. My mom and I looked at each other thinking, was that really her last breath? It had been a long three weeks. Nanny was never left alone. I jumped into my bed with her like I always would and I held her in my arms. I knew that when I let go, everything would be real and that she would have died. Once I let go of my nanny, mom was already on the phone, making the 20 million calls needed to be made after someone dies. I started the slow drive home from Agassiz to Rosedale, passing over the bridge and thinking how we had a pretty good end of life experience. And yet, there are many challenges we were unprepared for. I wondered, how do other families navigate these struggles? How are people in our community being supported through aging and end of life? And what about people who don't have families or families nearby? There's a trend of avoidance when it comes to talking about death. It can make the reality of the situation or the reality of the future feel too real. I hear you. It's uncharted territory. You feel uncomfortable, terrified of offending your loved one, and unsure it's, if it's even your place to bring it up praying that your intention of love and care shines through. And every family member feels like they know exactly what their loved one would want based on their unique relationship. This causes a lot of confusion with a differing point of views and can overshadow what the person truly needs and wants. And we know it's not family conflict. And now talking about death is just one piece of the puzzle. There is an immense amount of work and sacrifice that comes with fulfilling the multiple evolving roles of a caregiver. Caregivers carry a 24-7 responsibility for constant problem-solving, decision-making, and support with daily tasks, often leading to complete caregiver burnout. Research shows that people feel unprepared for the role. Everybody wants to give their loved one the best care possible, but that can be limited by career, finance, and knowledge barriers. This work is primarily gendered, unpaid, invisible labor. Quality care should not be dependent on privilege. At the time that this was all taking place, I was in the midst of my social work degree. I began to understand the experience of navigating our healthcare system and the gaps that exist in supporting families. I knew we could do better. This motivated me to create my business for the purpose of closing these gaps within planning and support so people didn't have to learn on the go. I create opportunities for people to feel safe and supported to talk about death, what it means to them and for them. By having these conversations, we can lessen uncertainty, fear, and conflict. When everything is outlined, family can focus on what matters most, time together. Having these conversations and making a plan while you are healthy is encouraged by end-of-life doulas so that care received at the end of life is appropriate and aligned with your wishes. Preparing isn't going to jinx yourself. It's taking control over what you can during such an unpredictable part of life. Let's try an exercise. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Think about your family. What would be their experience if you died tomorrow? Open your eyes. Would they be prepared and know what to do? None of us know when we're going to die. There's no notice, reminder email, heads up. Death doesn't set an appointment. Death is often unexpected. It's never too early to have these conversations, but it could be too late. 
When I met Jennifer Malmes, we decided to take action. As a community home care nurse, Jennifer is frontline, working within the frustrating healthcare system, unable to adequately support people through aging and end of life. Together, we founded the End of Life Doula Association of Canada to raise the standard of end of life care by establishing the scope of practice, code of ethics, and body of knowledge for the doula profession, and to offer Canadians greater resources and support. End of life doulas are a calm and reassuring presence with knowledge of the death and grief experience. Doulas provide information and resources to allow you to make informed decisions and to access support. Working with a doula in advance can significantly improve the quality and dignity of end of life. Now, working with a doula is not just for people who are old, sick, or near the end of life. Planning for the future is for all adults. When people learn about my business, they share, oh, it's incredibly valuable and needed. In the same breath, they say, ah, oh, I'll call you in 20 years. That's a red flag. It is not in our best interest to disassociate ourselves from death. By all of us normalizing these conversations and planning, because no one's excluded, new norms for families and communities can be created for how end of life and death is approached. Imagine, imagine how empowering it could it be to take control over what your end of life experience looks like and to have control over how your family will be prepared and supported. You have this opportunity. My hope for you is that you don't wait until you receive a diagnosis or experience a sudden death to motivate you to complete your planning and to have some of life's most important conversations. Avoiding the conversation doesn't prolong life or change the inevitable. It only lessens the opportunity to improve it. Let death motivate you to live and create the change you want to see in the world. Thank you. Thank you.